Hello to all my dear friends in Chicago. There's a, an amazing story about Rabbi Yitzchak Yaakov Reines, the founder of Mizrahi and uh, much of religious Zionism as we know it today. So Rabbi Reines was truly a lover of the people of Israel. He was someone who really felt the pain of other Jews. And they say about him, Rameir Bar Ilan writes about him, that when tragic things would happen, when persecutions would occur, when a Jew would be killed, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when Rabbi Reines was active and, and a leading rabbi in Europe, he would get so upset that he would physically become ill and he would shake and he would tremble and, and he would pace the room and, and, and mutter to himself saying, yeah, we have to do something, we've got to act, we have to do something. Now, Rabbi Reines didn't know what to do, right? Because in those days, Am Yisrael, we were helpless. We, were, we had no power, we had no country, we had no government, we had nothing. But nevertheless, Rabbi Reines felt that any Jew who responded to Jewish suffering with passivity uh, is not worthy of the name of, of, of a Jewish leader or a rabbi who would be angry about gedolim that seemed to be focused really only on learning Torah or davening and, and keep their heads down and, and wouldn't speak out or say anything or do anything to try to relieve Jewish suffering when, when Jewish people were being persecuted. Rabbi Yitzchak Nissenbaum who was the original editor of HaMizrahi magazine. He was murdered in the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Nissenbaum is truly a hero of mine. And Rabbi Nissenbaum said something really amazing. He goes, for, for a very, very long time, thousands of years, the Jewish people have read Eicha, and we say, Eicha, how could it be? How could it be? Right? We look up to God, we have no idea what to do with all this persecution, all the evil, all the anti-Semitism, and we throw up our hands and we say, Eicha, how could it be? Rabbi Nissenbaum said that nowadays we have to change our attitude and we have to change the way that we read the book of Eicha. Instead of reading Eicha, we have to read the word as Ayeka, where are you? He said, no longer are Jewish people helpless. We don't, no longer should say Eicha, Hashem, how could it be? But rather Ayeka, directed to ourselves and say, what am I doing? Where are you? Every Jew has to ask themselves that question. We're now in an incredibly difficult time. It's, it's unbelievable what's happening in Israel, the nations of the world turning against us, and particularly in Chicago, which is one of the hotbeds of, of Hamas anti-Semitism. It's, it's, it's really one of the worst cities in the world, uh, filled with people who hate us. Are we going to just cede the streets to these people? Are we going to keep our heads down? Are we going to be quiet you know, and, and, and take away the signs from our from our front lawn so that they don't know that we're Jewish, that we're obviously Jewish, and, and try to keep our heads down and be quiet and be safe? Or are we going to stand up as proud Jews and speak out, right? It's time, it's time for all the Jews of America, for Jews all over the world, and especially in Chicago, where we have so many anti-Semites, to stand up and be strong and say, we're not interested in the two-state delusion. We're not interested, right, in, in all of this pressure, and we're not gonna stand, we're not gonna listen to it. We're not going to, to, to be Jews with weak knees. We're not going to be Jews who allow ourselves to be pushed around. Stand up, have your voice be heard. There are, there are real amazing activists in Chicago. And I think specifically during the three weeks, during this difficult and painful time, the question is not Eicha, but rather Ayeka. What are you going to do?